بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد قرآن نائلي إن شاء الله in tonight's tarawi we'll be reciting Surah Al-A'raf and part of Surah Al-Anfal completing the 8th juz and the 9th juz of the whole Quran in Surah Al-A'raf which is a Makki Surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about a dialogue between the people of Jannah and the people of Nar, the people of the fire. And in between them will be Ashab al-Araf, people on the heights. They will be seeing both of them and recognizing each group and wanting to be, obviously, with the people of paradise. And this dialogue, it starts off in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, وَنَادَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ أَنْ قَدْ وَجَدْنَا مَا وَعَدَنَا رَبُّنَا حَقَّهِ فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعَدَ رَبُّكُمْ حَقَّ قَالُوا نَعَمْ فَأَذْنَ مُؤَذِّنٌ بَيْنَهُمْ أَنْ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ The people of Jannah will call out to the people of Paradise uh, and they will say to them uh, We have found true what our Lord has promised to us. Have you found that true as well? They will say yes and a caller will call out between them that may the curse of Allah be upon those who are wrong. The wrongdoers. And they used to who used to turn themselves away from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, looking and seeking crookedness in it, while they were deniers of the hereafter. Now it's real, it's in front of them. And between both of them there will be a barrier. And there will be people on there, the people of Araf. Uh, on the heights, there shall they will recognize each group over here, uh, the people of paradise, as well as the people of Jahannam, the people of the fire. And they will say, Wanada ashab al Jannati and Salamun alaykum. They will call out, the people of Araf will call out to the people of paradise, may peace be upon you. Lam they haven't entered it yet. فَهُمْ يَطْمَعُونَ But they will be wanting to enter into it and have hope to enter in it, expectation to enter into it. Then they'll turn their faces and they'll, their eyes and they will look at the people of the, the fire. وَصُرِفَتْ أَبْصَارُهُمْ تِلْقَاءَ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ قَالُوا رَبَّنَا لَا تَجَعَنَّا مَعَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ When they see their condition, they will say, Oh Allah, don't make us among the people who are unjust. وَنَادَ أَصْحَابُ الْعَرَافِ رِجَالٍ يَعْرِفُونَ بِسِيمَاهُمْ قَالُوا مَا أَغْنَى عَنْكُمْ جَمْعُكُمْ وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَكْبِرُونَ Look what the people of Araf will say to them when they recognize the people of Jannah or the people of the fire. They will say, your masses, they were not able to help you. You know, your, your groups and huge masses that you accumulated. وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَكْبِرُونَ And also that you used to act arrogantly and in our pride and conceit. Now where is that? And they will say, it's about the, this group that's successful nowadays that are going to Jannah. You used to say about them. What did you say? Is it these people? Is it these people about whom you swore that would uh, that Allah's mercy would not reach to them? Now they're in the mercy of Allah and they're in Jannah. That will be said to such people, enter into paradise. There will be no fear on you, nor shall you grieve. And then the people of Jahannam and the people of the fire, Ashab al Nar, will call out to Ashab al Jannah, Ashab al Nari, Ashab al Jannah, and Afidu alayna min al Ma, O Mimma, Razakum Allah, Kalu in Allah Haramahuma al al Kafirin. They will say to the people of Jannah, this is the people who are in the hellfire. They will say, pour down some of some water for us, uh, or some something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it prohibited both of those things to the disbelievers today. That's not gonna benefit. Why? Look at this. 
those who had taken their faith as play and a game. This is no game. And the worldly life had deceived them. What about us? So we shall forget them today, and they had, as they had forgotten to face this day of theirs, and they used to deny our signs. So this dialogue takes place in this surah. Likewise, we come upon the verse, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِي قَرِيَةٍ مِنْ نَبِيٍّ إِلَّا أَخَذْنَا أَهْلَهَا بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَضَّرَّعُونَ you know, hardships and ease come to all types of people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it for a test. He says, did we not send any prophet to a town, but we seized its people with hardships and sufferings. You know, just like uh, all towns go through this sometime in history. And depending on how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test us, it will bring down such things. And... It says, so this hardships and this suffering that we seize them with, so that they might humble themselves. Humble themselves. You know how arrogant we are, how proud we are sometimes, and we don't give credit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where it's due, and this is our problem. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sends down these things upon us, and we transform the affliction into ease of life. You know, sometimes Allah uplifts them then and gives ease again. So that they thrived and said to themselves, Misfortune and hardship befell our fathers as well. Whereupon we took them to task all of a sudden without their being aware of what was coming. So this surah narrates many stories of the messengers whose nations refused to listen to them and were ultimately destroyed. And here it's just like a general statement about the, the behavior of those people who denied and didn't pay attention to those signs. And the hardships and ease of life were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a way to uh, shake them out of their complacency, you know, and out of their ignorant ways. And so here in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells them that these are not, uh, these happens, these, these incidents that happen, they're not random, they're not accidents, uh, nor are they ultimately the result of just the cause of, you know, apparent cause or a local cause. This is a divine plan. Things don't, they're not accidents. There are not accidents in the divine plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And behind everything that's happening, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to his wisdom, sends down those plans. And people of wisdom can see the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their afflictions as well. And so whether it's affliction, whether it's prosperity, both of them are for them to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submit to Him. And those who failed and don't see this way, they are destroyed ultimately. Likewise, we come upon the verses وَجَاوَزْنَا بِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْبَحْرَ فَأَتَوْا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ يَعْكُفُونَ عَلَىٰ أَصْنَامٍ لَهُمْ قَالُوا يَا مُوسَ جَعَلْ لَنَا إِلَاهًا كَمَا لَهُمْ آلِهَةً قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَجْعَلُونَ you know, when Bani Israel crossed over the ocean and they came upon a people devoting their time to their idols, the Bani Israel said to Musa, السلام, make us a guide like, like theirs. You know, they're worshipping and so we want a God like that. You have to remember the history uh, with the Misri people, the people of Egypt, and especially the Coptics, you know, they were idol worshippers. They had been there for 400 years, you know, so many hundreds of years. Obviously, the love of idol idolatry was in them as well. And so, this is why they stated what they said. He said to them, you are really an ignorant people. 
What these people are engaged in is sure to be destroyed. This is a creation of Allah. And false is what they are doing. And so it's important to pay attention to these uh, types of thoughts that they had. So blind imitation of other people is a very serious disease. We want the same objects of devotion, days of celebration, and pursuits and patterns of life of those, as those who we think are successful. Ibn Atiyah, rahimahullah, he says that the children of Israel perhaps were not proposing idol worship per se. They might have been rationalizing that the statue would help them visualize and thereby to their worship, do their worship of God with more concentration. Right? So they didn't uh, worship them per se, but it would help them in concentration to worship God. If true, it only shows that such rationalizations really do what they camouflage a slavish mentality. And so, so common today as a result of colonial experience and, you know, a long history of that, let us not forget that the children of Israel did end up worshiping the calf, worshiping the calf after all. And so in any case, the reply that Musa والسلام, gave to them was so fitting and it can help us rid this debilitating sickness as well today. And likewise, we come upon uh, the verses الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الرَّسُولَ النَّبِيَّ الْأُمِّيَّ الَّذِي يَجِدُونَهُ مَكْتُوبًا عِنْدَهُمْ فِي التَّورَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ You know, the Prophet ﷺ and uh, his followers are described in the Torah in the Injil. Those who follow the Messenger, the unlettered Prophet, whom they mentioned in their own scriptures in the Torah and in the Bible and the Injil. The Gospels. What did he say about him? Ya'murhum bil ma'roof. Listen to the description, so beautiful. Wa yanhaahum anil munkar. Wa yuhillu wa yuhillu lahum al-tayyibat. Wa yuharrimu alayhum al-khabait. Wa yad'u anhum as-israhum. Wa al-aghlal al-ladhi kanat alayhim. And so, the Prophet and they were described as doing what? The Prophet was described as who bids them what is fair and forbids them what is unfair and makes lawful for them the good things and makes unlawful for them the impure things and relieves them of their burden and of the shackles that were upon them. So those who believe in him and support him and help him and follow the right or the light sent down with him, those are the ones who are successful. Likewise, you know, in this verse, I'll just point out that this concise introduction to the Prophet wasallam, it is so beautiful. He commands what is fair, just, and good. He forbids what is unfair, unjust, and evil. He declares permissible what is clean and pure. He declares impermissible what is unclean and unhealthy. He liberates humanity from the shackles that it had put upon itself. What are those? Of customs, traditions, superstitions, man-made laws. His is the most empowering and liberating message that leads to eternal success. This success is only for those who reject all the competing heroes and exemplars for the light of guidance brought by him. We come upon the verse وَسَأَلْ عَنِ الْقَرِيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَابِرَةَ الْبَحْرِ إِذْ يَعْدُونَ فِي السَّبْتِ إِذْ تَأْتِيهِمْ حِيْتَانُهُمْ يَوْمَ سَبْتِهِمْ شُرَّعُمْ وَيَوْمَ لَا يَسْبِتُونَ وَيَوْمَ لَا يَسْبِتُونَ لَا تَأْتِيهِمْ كَذَلِكَ نَبْلُوهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ This is about Jews who broke the Sabbath, the Sabbath breakers, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
He says, ask about them the town which stood by the sea. And when they used to transgress in the matter of the Sabbath, when their fish came to them openly on the Sabbath, on Saturday, and did not come when they did not have the Sabbath. In this way, we put them to a test because they used to act sinfully. We know the, the tricks that they used to play. You know, even though it was their holy day, they would set up nets and catch the fish anyway. So about this, uh, this tendency of the Banu Israel was basically a tendency that was against religious laws and in pursuit of only their passions for the sake of worldly gain. And unfortunately, the description of the past, uh, Banu Israel, it fits well with the Muslims of today. And all sorts of economic justifications being offered uh, for putting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands to the side. And so we have to really look at if those gains are against the commands of Allah, then we will never be successful. We must repent and never break the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes mention of the declaration that the arwah, the souls, took before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He created them from the loins of Adam. Recall when your Lord brought forth their progeny from the loins of the children of Adam and made them testified about themselves by asking them, rabbikum, Am I not your Lord? They said, Of course. You are, we testify. We did so lest you should say on the day of judgment, We were unaware of this. And so, this covenant that we took with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the alamul arwah, the realms of the spirits, the world of the spirit, you know, when some of you may say, we don't remember this, but remember each and every person who has that innate ability to always go back to the Creator. And that's why most of the people on this earth are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God, you know, worshipping the Creator, uh, they know this deep down inside. And this is why a hadith also indicates that uh, Every child that is born is born upon this fitrah. What is the fitrah? It's that innate uh, characteristic and feature inside of them that that tells them that they know that they were created by Allah and they remember Allah and they have that innate ability to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their creator and that they will be held responsible for whatever they are doing in this life and so that fitra you will say that well why do we have people not believing then in the world <clears throat> it's because you know, as they are brought up in their environments, they are brought up in negligence. They are brought up against that fitra, and they, it, it becomes clouded. And so every child is born with that potential and that competency to understand that Allah is their creator. And likewise, we come upon the verses about listening to the Qur'an, وَإِذَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse he says when the Quran is recited hearken unto it and listen to it properly and listen in silence so that you may be blessed this is the proper uh, etiquette regarding Quranic recitation. 
unfortunately we don't take the Quran seriously and when it's recited we are still talking <coughs> take an example of our cell phones you know you're listening to the Quran you're still talking or those uh, you know the tones that come on the phones it's the background it's playing but we have no we don't pay any attention to it and so our example is exactly that you know comes in one ear goes out the other ear we don't take any type of uh, advice from it or any lesson <clears throat> no tears come to our eyes and so are we really re listening to the Quran with its proper etiquettes? The Quran should command our attention and devotion unlike any other word. Because this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it should never be disrespected. And so when we listen to the taraweeh and the verses that are reciting, we should try to listen with the listening of Sima al qabul that is listening not just like animals listen or other people listen we listen to accept you can only accept when you know what's being recited <clears throat> and you understand it and you believe in it may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq wa akhru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen